Good afternoon and welcome back everyone to another episode of our options education session. My name is Tony Zhang. I'm the chief strategist here at Options Play. And today we're going to be talking about how to generate weekly income utilizing options. We're specifically going to cover one single strategy that is a fairly simple, fairly passive strategy that allows you to generate income every single week using options. We'll talk about the strategy, we'll talk about the rules for the strategy, and show you how it can potentially outperform the overall market with this fairly simple weekly options uh, strategy. It does build on what we learned last week. Last week, we talked about the top three income generating strategies. Today, we're going to talk about two of those strategies for this one strategy that's going to help you potentially outperform the overall markets. And like I said, we want to keep things as simple as possible. So whether you're brand new to options trading, if you've traded traded for years, the strategy that you should be able to follow along uh, during today's session. And during these Thursday education sessions, our goal is always to try to empower you to trade sustainably and confident, confidently in the long run. My goal here is to make sure that you guys have a well-rounded education to help you understand how you can utilize uh, options in your portfolio, whether that's for risk management, generating income, or speculating on the overall direction with the markets, knowing how to utilize these strategies appropriately for your portfolio so that you can grow sustainably and confidently, not just uh, not just um, gambling, if you will, your money utilizing options. But before we get started, what we are going to discuss here today is purely for education and demonstration purposes. It is not a solicitation or recommendation recommendation to buy or sell any of the specific securities that I'll be using as example purposes during today's session. So we're going to kick things off by quickly just reviewing theta or time decay, because this is an important element to understand whenever you're selling option as to what time decay is and how it reacts to time and whether you're trading a weekly, a monthly, or a daily option. Then we're going to talk about specifically selling weekly options. Uh, there's a bit of a sweet spot that you get with weekly options. We'll talk about kind of what you get from uh, the acceleration in terms of time decay versus what trade-offs you might be making for that acceleration in time decay. Then I'm going to walk you through this simple passive income strategy, something that you don't have to actively manage, that you have to look at once a week. You don't have to necessarily react to the markets or time the markets. You can just do this week in, week in, and week out to generate weekly income for your overall portfolio. And then we'll talk a little bit about what product, meaning what instrument should you trade this specific strategy on. We'll talk about ETF versus index options. And then what we'll do is we'll go through a trade example and show you the results of that trade example over, let's say, a six-month time frame. And then at the very end, we'll open this up for Q&A. But the primary thing that my goal here for today's session, my primary thing that I want you to be able to walk away from today's session is a clear understanding as to a simple strategy to generate weekly income utilizing options that can help you potentially outperform the markets. What I want to go over are the simple rules for the strategy, clear rules as to when to enter the trade and which options specifically to sell that will outperform from the markets and then show you the passive management aspect of it, meaning only requiring maintenance once a week and you're always holding the options to expiration so you don't have to worry about what do I do prior to expiration. You know that you can sell an option, hold it to expiration, and that's all you need to do. So very simple, clear rules to enter, clear rules as to how to manage these trades once you're in the position. Um, and as always, the primary question that I get very commonly is are these sessions recorded yes these sessions are recorded you can access the recordings and we will send you both the recording and the slides as long as you have an access to an options play account this will give you access to the tools that i'll be showing you here today as well as the recording and slides you can sign up using the link here on your screen or point your phone to that qr code or um, i will have philip post the link into the chat window for you guys to get started with signing up for a free 30-day trial to Options Play so that you can get access to the slides and recordings and follow along after today's session. So 
If you have not already uh, chimed into the chat window, I see many, many of you have already uh, chimed into the chat window and said hello and where you're from. Please feel free, especially if you're joining us for the first time. We have hundreds of you here joining us. We have a pretty vibrant community of traders. So if you're joining us for the first time, please uh, feel free to say hello where you're from. As you can see from the chat window, we have viewers from just about everywhere around the world, a lot of North America, a lot of Canada, but I've also seen places like uh, South Africa. Uh, I've seen Sweden. I've seen um, Germany. I've seen a lot of other countries. So please feel free to chime in and let us know where you're from, uh, if you're, especially if you're joining us for the first time. And welcome if you are joining us here for the first time. Okay. So before we talk about selling options or weekly options, we have to first understand some of the, uh, an important concept with options and how it uh, affects which options expiration you choose. And that's the Greek theta or what we typically refer to as time decay. Now, delta and theta are by far the two most important Greeks. So if you're not familiar with Greeks and you need to, some time to review, I, I definitely encourage you to take some time to review delta and theta. For this particular purpose, we're going to talk about theta first because theta it represents the change in the value of an option with respect to time. Now, as an option seller, what you want is the value of the option to decrease as it approaches expiration because you want to sell an option for a specific premium and you're hoping that by expiration that premium evaporates to zero and you keep 100% of what you've collected or what you've sold the option for. So what theta tells you is how fast is the value of that option going to decay with respect to time. So for every one day that goes by, how much of that option value will decay with time? And the 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 time decay factor the theta time decay factor tells you that the intrinsic value of an option will decay faster as it gets closer to expiration so what that means is that if you hold the one month option the first few days it's not going to decrease by much in terms of value but as you get closer and closer to expiration if all other things are held constant each day that goes by the value of the op of the option will evaporate slightly faster as day and day as the day goes on. So as you get to the last few days of, of options expiration, the decay starts to get really fast. And that's why a lot of traders have a preference for selling what we call shorter dated options. So options that expire in one week or even in a day or two days, you know, those options will expire or the, the income that you collect per day is going to be faster than if you sell a one month option. So theoretically speaking, you will collect more income if you sell four weekly options than you do if you sell one monthly option. So even though the time frame is the same, if you break it up into selling four weekly options, uh, you will collect theoretically more more income. Or actually, uh, you know, practically, you will you will uh, capture more income selling four weekly options versus one monthly option. Okay. Before we move on, does that make sense, everyone? Please type one into the chat window if that makes sense to you. Time decay accelerates as you get closer to expiration, which is why traders have a preference if ever, for traders that are selling options. They prefer to sell shorter dated options. But it's important to understand there's a trade-off for this, right? And this is really what I think a lot of traders that don't have a lot of experience tend to overlook because when you sell shorter dated options, what you get is less income per trade. You may get more income over the long run, meaning if you do actually manage to sell four weekly options versus selling one monthly option, you, but each individual trade, you're gonna get less income. And that's important to understand because in order to generate these, the, the more income, you have to sell four weekly options. Now, that means that you have four opportunities to potentially be assigned on that short, uh, short call or short put or whatever strategy that you're selling. So what you're doing is you're substantially increasing your exercise risk by selling shorter dated options versus longer dated options. That's one major trade-off that you have. So yes, you can potentially make more money in the long run, but you're adding a lot more risk along the way. The second thing is you also have significantly higher, you're, you're increasing your transaction costs. 
it's, you know, these days in zero commissions, the fees and commissions is less so of a concern, but bid ask spreads of having to sell options four times, you're paying the bid ask spread four times versus paying it only once when you're selling a monthly option. So you are increasing your transaction costs by four times the amount, and that will add up over time. So there is a diminishing return as you go slow, as you get closer and closer to expiration, because theoretically you can take that concept you know, and sell zero days to expiration options, which is something we'll talk here uh, later this month about, you know, when you go to the really extreme end of the curve, when you sell one day options, what does that look like? But it's important to understand that, yes, theoretically, you get more income by selling shorter dated options, but there are some substantial trade-offs for that. Does that make sense? Please type two into the chat window if that makes sense to you. So, this week, what we're going to do is we're going to talk about a bit of a sweet spot, selling weekly options, right? So, you know, we, we all understand selling monthly, you know, the shorter you go, the, 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 the higher income that you get per day, but we're not going to go to the extreme end of the curve. We're not going to go to zero days expiration. We're going to talk about that next week and the following week. This week, we're going to talk about selling weekly options. And I think this is a really good sweet spot for the vast majority of traders, especially if you're relatively new to options trading or options selling. Selling weekly options can be a good sweet spot, uh, even though I think that the, the you know for everyone, monthly options is the, is the best starting point. Once you get a little bit of experience trading options, especially if you have the ability to trade options more frequently, weekly options provide you a little bit of a sweet spot. But when you are selling weekly options, you generally speaking should only do it on ETFs and indices. You should not do it on a uh, single stock. Um, so if you're doing single stock, I still recommend that you do monthly options, but when you're selling weekly options, you have to stick to the major ETFs and the major indices, because whenever you're selling weekly options, what you need to do is you need to diversify away single stock risk. Selling options on instruments that track indices like S&P 500, NASDAQ 100, Russell 2000, these are going to have fewer gap risk, right? You're not going to have uh, you know, a news announcement come out overnight, you know, uh, Boeing shares, you know, down 10% because, you know, something happened uh, in the air. You are, you're not going to see surprise, you know, uh, earnings or dividends move the stock, you know, 5, 10% overnight. That's going to completely derail your option selling strategies. So what you want to do is you want to avoid that overnight gap risk. And generally speaking, when you trade indices, you have far smaller um gap risk because, you know, there are 500 securities in the S&P 500, 100 securities in the NASDAQ 100. No single security or the no news on a single security will likely cause much of a gap in the uh, shares overnight. Okay. So earnings and catalysts are something that you have concerned uh, that you have to be concerned about when you're trading single stock, but when you're trading ETF indices, you're kind of diversifying that away. So when you're selling weekly options, you have to stick to the major indices. Second thing is that indices, generally speaking, from a statistical perspective, rally 60% of the time. So whether you're looking at daily interval, weekly interval, monthly interval, this statistic remains fairly constant. In the long run, in, uh, indices appreciate in value about 60% of the time and decline about 40% of the time. This certainly puts probabilities in your favor in one specific direction for the strategy that we're going to discuss here today. Third of all, ETFs and indices dip, typically have deeper liquidity, and these are the these are the strategies that offer daily expirations. Now, even though we're not using the daily expirations, we'll see we'll talk about how they're applicable even when you're selling weekly options. So these uh, these strategy these uh, options will have tighter bid ask spreads, which means that you will pay lower transaction costs selling ETF um, or index options than you will on single stock. And the daily expirations allow strategies to start any day of the week. So even though you're trading weekly options, you don't have to trade Friday to Friday. So when you're trading single stock, you have to trade Friday to Friday. But when you're trading ETFs, you could trade Monday to Monday or Wednesday to Wednesday, depending on your schedule. And having that daily expiration just gives you that flexibility to choose which day of the week you want to establish your weekly option selling strategy. Does that make sense, everyone? Please type three into the chat window if that makes sense to you. 
So important thing to remember when you're selling weekly options, you have to stick to the ETFs and the indices for selling them, uh, selling weekly options. Do not do this in single stock names. So now that we've kind of identified that, it's also important to understand what is the difference between an ETF and an index option. There is differences, and we'll actually talk about that later this month as well. We'll do a whole session just on that alone, but just at a very high level. Um, typically, ETFs will be better, in my opinion, for this because they're better suited for retail traders from a contract size perspective, uh, and they generally offer the same type bid ask um, spreads. So if you think about an SPX, a NASDAQ, uh, uh, S&P 500, that's over a half a million notional value do dollar contract. So just minimum contract size, you're trading much, much larger size versus SPY, it's a $50,000 contract. So you're talking about 10 times, 10 times smaller. <clears throat> you look at uh, NASDAQ 100, that's a $1.8 million contract versus Q's, it's about $400,000 uh, contract. So, or $450,000. Uh, $45,000 contract. So you're talking about, you know, about 5% of the notional value. So th from that perspective, I think ETF give you very similar risk profile to selling index options at a size that's far more favorable for most portfolios. Um, when we talk about the strategy here today, we'll talk about short puts and cover calls. Only in ETFs will the short put assignment allow you to own the stock that can then allow you to sell cover calls on the stock to continue generating income. Index options are cash settled, so there's you will never actually own the underlying index, which doesn't allow you to sell a cover call. So that's one other downside to index options in that particular case. ETF options are all, all PM settled, so it's easy to work with. Some index options are AM settled, which makes it more confusing. There's overnight risk, and I generally don't recommend that for most retail traders. And simply with ETFs, you have a wider variety of indices available to trade. You know, if you look at index options, you really have S&P 500, NASDAQ 100, and Russell 2000. You know, when you trade ETFs, you can sell maybe XLK, you can sell um, a specific slice of the market, you know, maybe semiconductors or housing or whatever um, ETF that you prefer, uh, you know, tracking, right, or trying to outperform. This gives you a little bit more variety than when you're selling the index options. So that's why, at least for the purposes of today, I'm going to use SPY, the ETF, rather than the index options. And we will talk a little bit more about the differences as we approach the sessions here uh, the following week. Does that make sense, everyone? Please type four into the chat window if that makes sense to you. So, so far, what we've said is that time decay accelerates as you get close to expiration. So selling weekly options gives you a bit of a sweet spot. But if you're going to sell weekly options, make sure you stick to major indices. And specifically, I think it's better to use ETF options rather than the index options for this purpose. Okay. So let's now talk about, now that we've laid the groundwork, let's talk about this very simple strategy that allows you to potentially outperform the markets using a weekly option strategy. So there's two components to it, and you basically just have to remember these two components, and that's it. What you want to do is you want to sell a one-week 30 delta naked put. That means you find the expiration that's one week out, and you're looking at the 30 delta put in terms of a strike price to sell. And the goal here is you simply sell it and you hold it to expiration with the potential to be assigned on the underlying security. Uh, if you, Because when you sell the put, you're obligated to purchase the stock at the strike price if the stock price is below the strike price at expiration. And because we're choosing a 30 delta naked put or 30 delta put, what that means that translates to is that roughly 70% of your trades will be winners. And you should expect with this roughly about 1% to 2% weekly income based on the cash that you need to set aside in order to sell this option strategy. Now, this is based on a naked put margin requirement, which requires level four options. You could do this with a cash secure put. It's going to be a lot less capital efficient. You're going to get less weekly income, but it is something that you can do. But I do think that for many traders that are interested in this type of strategy, especially if you're looking for ways to outperform the market, it, it 
it's worth looking at having level four so that you can sell naked short puts on, let's say, SPY, because that significantly reduces the margin requirements that get into the trade. And that's just going to have the effect of amplifying your weekly income. So the goal here is to keep selling short puts until you get assigned. Once you get assigned, what you want to do is you simply want to sell one week cover call at the strike price that you were assigned and you simply keep doing that until the stock gets called away. That's it. And typically, this is what we refer to as a wheel strategy. But what I really like about this fact is that it allows me to do it on a weekly basis. And it doesn't require any active management from the, from the day you uh, enter the trade through expiration. You basically always hold the trade, whether it's a short put that expires worthless or if you end up getting assigned and you're selling cover calls, you're always holding all income, all option strategies through expiration. And then on the next day, you simply take action and rinse and repeat. And that that's why this is a simple strategy that you really don't have any exit rules. You just have to worry about uh, you know, making sure that every single week you come back and you sell this option to um, to to. Uh, continue the income stream on this overall portfolio. Now, if uh, this is, uh, does that make sense, everyone? Please type five into the chat window if that makes sense to you. And if it doesn't, we're going to go through a real example and try to walk you through this so that you can hopefully better understand. Okay. And we'll talk through the different scenarios what happens when the stock declines, what if the stock rallies, what do we do in each of these scenarios? Okay. So, I'm going to walk you through a trade, right? I'm going to walk you through a series of trades, rather. Um, I'm going to start with just giving you an understanding of like what happens if you get assigned. How do you deal with the cover call side of things? We're going to walk you through this. Then what I'll do is I'll show you a longer result of this strategy in the long run. So I'm going to start here at the end of Q3 of 2023. Um, this is the last trading day in, in Q3 of 2023. At that time, SPY was trading at four, at 427. 48. So what we do is on the on the date of the last quarter, what we do is we go out one week in expiration, which goes out to the October 6th expiration. So we go from uh, one week out. And what I'm looking for is the 20, uh, 30 delta strike price, which at the time when the stock was trading at 427 is the 423 strike. So I'm selling the one week 423 put at the time I can collect $189 for that short put. So what I basically do is I sell this one week, 423 put, I collect $189. And what I do is I simply wait for the following week uh, for this option to expire. So the following week, if we look, uh, I sold the 423, the following week, the stock closed at 424.50. So what that means is that the short put that I sold expired worthless. And I make in this particular case, about a 2.16% return on my trade because my margin requirement on the trade was about $8,700 to sell one short put naked on SPY on that date. So if I'm going to collect $189 on my $8,734 margin requirement, gives me about a 2.16% return for the week. Okay. The next week, what I do is I look at the current sp uh, spot price, which is 424. And I look at going out one week, which is the October 13th expiration. And I look at selling the same 30 Delta put, which at that time was 419. And that collected $228 worth of premium. And same thing, if I look out one week later, when I sold the 419 put and a week later, the stock's trading at 433. That means my puts expired worthless. And again, I keep the total premium, which in this particular case was a 2.62% uh, yield on my investment. Now let's fast forward that one more week again. So when it was 4.33, I'm gonna go out another week and I'm gonna find the 30 Delta put. That's the 4.29 put, I'm collecting $184. And note here, when I go out one week, as you can see, the stock declined to 426. So when I sold the 429 put and the stock's trading at 426, 
I'm going to get assigned on these shares. That means I'm going to have to buy 100 shares of SPY at the effective price of $429. I do take a $184 discount on the purchase because I collected $184 worth of premium on this, but I am assigned on this trade. And now this is really where we have to change our strategy, right? Now I own the shares. The goal here, what you want to do once you own the shares, is now you want to flip to selling calls, right? Because now you own 100 shares within the stock. Now you want to sell calls on the, on the stock. But what strike price do you want to sell? You also want to go out one week from expiration. So on October 20th, I'm going to go out, out to October 27th. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to reference where did I get assigned? I got assigned at $429. So what I'm going to keep doing is I'm going to keep selling the $429 call. In this particular case, I'm going to collect $347 worth of income for that. And note, in this particular case, my margin requirement goes up substantially because for me to hold 100 shares of SPY, my margin requirement on that is higher than the margin requirement to sell the, cat, uh, sell the naked put. So that is something that we are also going to factor into our, this, uh, our return calculation is that now I'm going to need more cash to hold on to 100 shares of SPY. So even though I'm generating more income here, $347, my yield on this actually declines to 1.63% because I do need additional margin in order to now own 100 shares of SPY. So I'm calculating this margin as 50% of the market value of SPY, 100 shares of SPY. Um, that is typical if you have a margin account of of the uh, cash that you need in order to hold on to this trade. So what I'm going to keep doing is I'm going to keep selling the 429 cover call every single week, and I'm not going to adjust the strike price. I'm going to keep selling the 429 calls so that if the stock gets back up to that price, I'm basically going to be able to get out of the stock at break even, but I'm going to keep continuing to generate income as I wait for the stock to rally. And this is really kind of the passive side of things is I, I don't really have to do much. Just once a week, I come back, I either, I either I'm selling a, a short put, or if I get assigned, I just keep selling cover calls until, and as you can see here on October 27th, I go out another week, I sell the 429 calls. Now, because the stock's trading at 412, the 429 calls are quite a bit out of the money. As you can see, this call only collects $36. That's okay. You know, you have to accept the fact that not every single week you're going to be able to generate the maximum income. Sometimes when the stock declines, you're just going to get less premium. In this particular case, I'm only going to generate $36 worth of premium. So this week, I'm only going to generate 0.17% yield on my on my um on my strategy. Now, if you annualize that out, that's not a bad result. And you'll see over the long run, this actually looks quite attractive. But you know, as you can see, if I sold the 429 call on October, on November 3rd, go out one week, the stock is now trading at 430. What that means is that my cover call has now been assigned. And basically, I've sold my stock at 429. And now the following week, I go back to selling puts. So I go out another week, I go out to November 10th expiration, and now I go back to finding the same 30 delta put option, which at that case was $426. And I'm gonna sell that put for $171, and I'm going back to uh, selling my premium. Now, if I keep doing this over and over again, that's really kind of the strategy. And that's kind of what this this shows you, right? I, I What I showed you was the first, um, I think it was the first six or seven rows here. Uh, for this strategy, just to walk you through the mechanics of we keep selling puts until we get assigned, and then we start selling cover calls at the original strike price that we were assigned, and we keep doing that until the stock gets called away, and that basically means that we uh, raise the cash again, and we go back to selling cash uh, naked puts, and we keep doing this over and over again. So this is basically looking at this trade starting from uh, the end of Q3 all the way through the last uh, week. So the last trade that we make was on, uh, was was the one that expires this Friday for the 509 puts. Um, when the stock was trading at 514, uh, we collected $227. This is still open. And basically at the end of this week, we'll see if SPY is going to be above 509. If it is, then we that those puts expire worthless and we keep doing it again next week. 
If it's below 509, that means we'll own SPY at 509 and we'll flip the selling cover calls, okay? Now, even though I went through a lot of numbers, hopefully you still understand that the strategy is quite simple to get started. Um, it's simple in terms of nature, meaning there's only two possibilities that you need to think about at the beginning of every single week. And you can do this uh, every single week on cover calls, on, on short puts, uh, short puts or cover calls. And you do it only once a week because you hold it to expiration. There's nothing that you have to do in the middle of the week in order to trade this type of strategy. Does that make sense, everyone? Please type uh, one into the chat window if that makes sense to you. Okay, so it's important, and, and keep in mind, if let's say you had invested in SPY at the time, right? If you had just simply bought SPY at the time for forty uh, for for uh, four hundred twenty seven dollars, and now it's trading at five hundred fourteen dollars, the S and P has returned to you twenty uh, a little over twenty percent in that time as a buy and hold strategy. Versus if you look at the, the return on this particular strategy overall, you're looking at just shy of being double that, just shy of 39%. So that's the outperformance that I'm referring to for this strategy. And, and keep in mind that this is arguably during some of the worst times to be selling cash, uh, selling naked puts, right? Because this is a time when the markets have basically been straight up. Uh, short puts, you know, aren't it's not the best strategy for when markets are roaring higher um but even in that scenario you are still outperforming the overall market by a pretty significant margin uh using this type of strategy however i do want to explain that the, the performance of this strategy varies fairly significantly based on when you start trading the strategy so if you had started trading the strategy um Nine months ago, your results wouldn't be as good when the markets were trading sideways into the downside. Or if you started trading the strategy at the, be at the beginning of, two, you know, at the end of 2007, right before the financial crisis, you're going to have a, a much tougher time with the strategy. And that unfortunately really comes down to luck. To some degree, you can also obviously time the markets and obviously valuations are something to also consider. The fact that markets are so overbought and valuations are fairly stretched. If you were to start the strategy this week, I would say that you might have a challenging couple of months before you know this strategy does turn profitable for you in the long run. Um, but this is the type of strategy that you do have to remain committed to it in the long run in order to see these types of results. And you could have a few weeks or sometimes even a few months when you do have underperformance. So as I look through 2023, um, I believe the longest period where we were assigned on the short put and you own the stock and you had to keep selling cover calls in order to get back or get back to break even, the longest streak of cover calls was 16 weeks. So there was a period where on nearly for nearly four months of time, you weren't actually generating income from those short puts. You're basically kind of sitting sideways, generating a little bit of income selling cover calls, really not that much income. So for four months out of the year, you kind of didn't have much income to show, but then the other uh, eight months of the year, you did have a substantial amount of income to show. So that is the nature of this type of strategy. Uh, you know, well, that's the nature of any investor, right? If you were if you were just a buy and hold strategy, you would have the same thing. There would be the same unrealized loss of when the markets are down, you have an unrealized loss, nothing to really show for it. Same thing here, nothing changes uh, with regard to that. So this strategy doesn't necessarily fix that because it does perform basically on par with the overall markets. When markets do well, this strategy does well. When markets are trading sideways or down, you will have you will slightly outperform the markets in those scenarios as well because you do have some premium coming in from cover calls. But it is important to understand that when markets are down, you know this is the type of strategy where you're kind of sitting around for a, for a, sometimes a few weeks, perhaps sometimes a few months. The longest period that I saw in 2013 was about 16 weeks of where you're kind of sitting around as the markets are trading sideways or to the downside. Um, 
you do need mar a cash or margin once you do get assigned, right? So that's why I was showing you here to, um, you know, when you do get assigned, your margin requirement does go up substantially, right? So in this particular time case, you know, this required 21,000, 20,000, 23,000. And as these indices continue to rise, your margin requirement is just going to keep rising as well. So when we started the strategy, we needed about $8,700 when S&P, well, SPY is at 427. These days, you need about $10,500, so almost a $2,000 increase per contract in, in, in um, margin requirements just to enter this type of trade. And, you know, that does have an influence in terms of your overall return, um, but it should it should be normalized because when the uh, value of the stock is higher, you're also technically going to get a higher amount of income for that. Um, and downtrends can result in weeks or months with very little income waiting for the ETF to recover to the original strike. Um, so that's really um, you know something to consider when you're thinking about these types of strategies. So um, while this was a fairly good stretch of time with regards to this overall strategy, um, it's important to also understand that there are bad times to offset this. So you do have to look at this in the long run in terms of the performance of the strategy. But it is a strategy that when things are somewhat normal, it's a great strategy to, to kind of trade very passively. Um, and you can do it just week after week without having to do active management on your portfolio. So what I'll do is I'll quickly show this to you on the options play platform um, as to how to find these uh, strategies. Um, let's go to SPY. And, you know, and, and the reason that I like using SPY, QQQ, IWM with the with daily expirations is that you can start this on any day of the week. Today is Thursday. You don't have to wait till Friday to do this, right? Because if you're doing single stock, you got to do it on Fridays or rather Monday mornings. Um, when you're doing single, uh, when you're doing indices, you can do them any day of the week. So you can start on a Thursday and go out exactly seven days, which goes out to March 21st. And let's say I'm looking at selling puts. Um, what I can do is I can use my uh, strike price and pick out which strike price to sell. I'm always looking for the 30 delta. So in this particular case, when the stock is trading at nearly 515, uh, the 30 deltas, the 510 puts, um, and that's going to collect $232 worth of premium. That would be my starting point with this type of trade is I would always look to sell, you know, one week, um, uh, 30 deltas as a starting point, and you can always use this um, for your, um, uh, let's say I want to create a weekly income portfolio. You can do this using options play. Um, you can create that portfolio, add this trade to your portfolio so that you can track this in your portfolio specifically for the strategy. Um, so let's look at my weekly income portfolio. And what I can do is I can once a week come back every single Thursday to see, okay, at the close, did this short put get assigned? If it did get assigned, um, what do I do? And if I haven't been assigned, I just keep selling puts. If I have been assigned, I flip to selling cover calls. And I always just have to look at what price did I get assigned at and making sure that I um, making sure that I'm able to sell cover calls at that same uh, cover call strike price. Um, you see why that's not loading. Uh, SPY is an ETF. SPY is not an index. An index would be, um, uh, maybe I didn't add this trade. Uh, an index would be SPX, NDX, RUT. Those are index options. So index options are a completely different beast. They're European, not American assignment. They are cash settled. You can't get physical delivery. There are some tax benefits to selling um, cash uh, index options. We'll talk about that here in a couple of weeks. Um, but uh, yeah, so I go out one week, which is always seven days. I look at the 30 Delta strike price, which in this particular case is the five tens. That's the number right here on the right-hand side, the deltas. I'm looking for a 30 Delta. That's going to collect $234 worth of, of uh, $234 worth of income on this particular trade. And I'm going to trade this. I'm going to add it to my weekly income portfolio and add that position. Um, and then I can now track this using my portfolio tool. And this is really designed to help you better um, 
keep tabs on your overall portfolio. There goes my short put. Um, so basically, I can make a reminder for myself every single Thursday to come back and look at the trade and see whether if it's expired worthless, I'll re I'll sell a new uh, seven day put. If not, I, I flip to selling cover calls. Um, so it's something that you don't have to actively manage, which is the passive part of this, right? Even though technically it's active, um, I would say the act, the management of it is very, very minimal. And that's what's attractive about this specific strategy. There are lots of other strategies that you can generate weekly income on, but this is one that I think is the easiest for just about anyone to potentially get started with this type of strategy. Um, and yes, you know, there's a comment saying this is basically the real strategy. It absolutely is basically the real strategy, but you're doing it on a weekly basis on an in, on an ETF, which has some advantages specifically to doing this. You know, if you're selling weekly options, you don't want to do it on um, um, single stock. You want to do it on either an index or ETF. But the reason that I think ETFs work better is that most investors don't have the capital that's required to sell naked SPX or NDX or any of those index options. So it's actually not a strategy that's suitable for a lot of traders, but SPY, QQQ, even though it's not a, it's not a, it's not a small contract, you still need a, you know, tens of thousands of dollars to trade this. Um, but that's something that's far more manageable than the hundreds of thousands of dollars that's required to sell the index options. Does that make sense, everyone? Please type one into the chat window if that makes sense to you. Perfect. Okay, so let's review what we learned today. Time decay. Time decay accelerates as you approach expiration, which is why a lot of traders favor selling short dated options, but it's, imp it's important to understand there is diminishing returns as you get shorter and shorter and shorter to expiration because you're getting increased risk due to assignment risk and you have increase, substantial increase in transaction costs. So you have to find a bit of a sweet spot. Weekly options provides you that bit of a sweet spot, but when you're trading weekly options, you gotta stick to ETFs or indices. Today, we also reviewed a simple passive wheel strategy that allows you to systematically approach selling weekly options where the management is only required once a week and you don't have to actively manage the strategy. And hopefully we showed you using the strategy how you can potentially outperform during bull markets and even have slight outperformance when there's a bear slash neutral markets compared to a simple buy and hold strategy of the overall markets. So hopefully that gives you a quick recap of what we learned here today. Um, what I'll do here at this point is I will open this up for Q&A. But before I do, just a reminder, if you want access to today's recording, if you want access to today's slides, or the options play platform that can help you implement the strategy and track your portfolio, you can sign up using the link here on your screen or at optionsplay.com slash sign up or point your phone to the QR code on your screen. All right, let's turn to some of the questions here. There's a couple of questions saying, how do I find weekly options and how do I find the 30 Delta? So, you know, most platforms, when you look at the expiration date, will tell you how many days to expiration. So you're really just looking for seven days to expiration. So whenever you use a drop down menu on expirations on options play, there is a number next to uh, the date that will tell you how many days to expiration. So you're looking for seven days. Right. And even if you're doing this on a Tuesday, right, because SPY uh, has options that expire every single day, you're basically looking for the for the next Tuesday. So because it's Thursday, I'm looking for next Thursday. That's going to be the March 21st expiration. The second question, how do I find the 30 delta? Well, that's really where options play will calculate it for you. So as you see, when you select your strike prices, there are three numbers. You have your strike price. You have your premium and you have your delta. So as you can see, I have a 31 delta and a 28 delta. So I'm looking for the one that's closest to 30 delta. I usually go for the strike price that's just above 30 deltas. So in this particular case, that's 31 deltas. And that's going to collect in this particular case, $2.32, okay? Okay. Um, now there's a Q&A window and a chat window. Please type your questions in the Q&A window and I'll try to answer as many questions as I have time for. Um, it's, 
there was a question about last week's presentation. If I'm not mistaken, I think that we're publishing that today. Um, we had an issue with publishing that over the weekend, so that is coming up today. I know many of you were looking for the recording from last week's session, so you'll be able to access last week's sessions and this week's sessions by this weekend. Um, Uh, there were a lot of questions around the margin in the in the in the naked put part of things. So a naked put just means that you don't have to um, you don't have to have all the cash um, in order to sell a, this short put. So if let's say you if you sold the cash secured put, right, you would need in this particular case forty two thousand three hundred dollars minus the hundred eighty nine dollars. So just call it forty two thousand dollars. You need forty two thousand dollars in order to sell this this put if you didn't have level four options. Now, that still makes it a perfectly valid strategy, but number one, it requires substantially more capital to get started. And because you need substantially more capital to trade it, your yield or your return comes down fairly significantly as well, which is why it's better in order to, for this particular strategy, to do this on a naked put rather than a cash secured put. And the margin requirement is calculated based on the premium that you collect plus the cash, um, you know, the spot rate, uh, roughly 20% of the market value of the contract. So, and that's really what the majority of the margin requirement here is made up. It's roughly 20% of the 42,000 uh, in cash that's required to buy 100 shares of SPY. That's the vast majority of the margin requirement. I saw quite a few questions about margin requirements. You can Google naked put uh, margin requirements on the internet. Uh, you can do it also at your broker and they'll help you calculate it. But, but generally speaking, this is a pretty close number, even though your broker might not be identical to that number. What do you do if an ETF declines so much that week or over the weekend that you get assigned and there's no value in the weekly calls you wanna sell? Um, there's all, you know, with, with weekly options, you're always going to find some value, right? Sometimes it may be as low as $10, $15 in terms of value, but you know, that's still $10, $15 that you wouldn't have received if you, if you just own uh, a buy and hold strategy. So uh, the, the short answer to your question is that even if there's little value in the cover calls for that week, you still want to sell it um, because that's a premium that you wouldn't have collected anyway. Uh, when you sell the call, you do not use a 30 delta call. You use the strike price of the of the strike price that you got assigned at. So here I sold the 429 put and that put was assigned, right? Uh, whoops, I sold the 429 put and that put was assigned. So every single week subsequent to that, I'm just going to always sell the 429 calls. I'm basically trying to get myself back to break even. You know, some of you may want to sell more aggressive calls and you can do that. But remember that then you will take an, a loss on the underlying uh, equity position if the stock, if the equity does rally, which is why most traders favor selling just uh, a, a a short a, a cover call at the original strike price that you got assigned at, so that when the stock does, you know, in this particular case, it took two weeks to recover. When it does recover, yes, you gave up basically one week's worth of income but you were able to capture that full value of that recovery. So it went all the way down from, to 412, but it recovered back to 430 the following week. You were able to capture all of that upside. You wouldn't be able to do that if you got more aggressive on a selling a cover call. And you know, even if you sold a more aggressive cover call and got $300, in this particular case, you would have given up, you know, a couple of thousand dollars worth of upside for it. It's not worth, you know, getting an extra two hundred dollars worth of income and giving up two twenty five hundred dollars worth of upside. You know, this is nearly uh, twenty. No, this was about eighteen hundred dollars worth of upside that you could have potentially missed out on if you if you didn't sell, um, you know, the original cover call. So, you know, that's not worth an extra two three hundred bucks. Um, so that's why when you're ever you're selling calls, you generally want to want to do that. Um, so uh, there was a quite a few questions on why you choose the original strike price rather than the thirty delta on the cover call. So hopefully that answered it. Um, is it better to sell put spreads or just the put options? Um, you could sell put spreads as the strategy, and that's kind of a variation of this strategy. Um, but you have the same, you have the same downside, right? Because, you know, that short put can get assigned and you basically have the same result. But what you're going to see is your premium that you collect 
is going to be much smaller. You might end up with a similar return because your margin requirements will be smaller. Um, so you can play with this and try it, but you absolutely can sell put spreads instead of just the naked put. You absolutely can do that. In the down market, could you not just sell calls instead of puts? In theory, yes, but that requires you to, to time the markets. That requires you to have a directional view on the markets. That requires you to also take on unlimited risk. So if you get the market view wrong and the stock and the markets uh, continue to increase in value, you have truly unlimited risk when you sell calls. So. This strategy, you don't have to worry about where you think the markets are going. You don't have to time the markets. You just every single week come back and you follow the methodical approach and you basically ride the the, 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 the movement of the markets. So, you know, yes, you can get a lot more technical and, and try to maybe get higher returns. But I promise you, I think in the long run, that will come to bite you because sometimes you're just going to get the market view on the on the markets wrong you're thinking oh i'm going to sell calls because i think the market's going to go down but guess what the market just weeks after weeks just keeps going up like we're doing right now and you could really get caught on the wrong side of this um it's hard to get caught on the wrong side of selling puts because the markets over the long run will continue to rally is the return based on the margin requirement yes it is uh, and multiple questions on how to figure the 30 deltas. You know, you don't have to figure the 30 deltas. Every single platform these days calculates delta for you. Our platform does the same thing. You just have to look for the 30 deltas. You don't have to calculate it at all. Is there a tool to scan for good candidates for the strategy? You know, this is, you don't have to have candidates for the strategy. This is, you pick one ETF that you're comfortable with, SPY, QQQ, IWM. Uh, my preference is to use SPY or QQQ and you stick with it. You're not changing candidates from week to week. You're really picking a major indice that's very liquid, that has daily expirations, which, you know, there's only only three or four of them. Um, so you're sticking to those. That's it. And you're trading the same instruments week after week. You're not changing one ETF for the next you know, for a different ETF every single week. You know, SPY, QQQ correlation is like 98%. So you're not going to get a significant difference from one over the other. Could you get a sign before the week is due? Very unlikely in, in this type of scenario on an ETF like this in single stock, you know, that's hard to borrow with the dividend coming up. Yes. But on, a, on ETFs, very, very unlikely. Would you recommend a strategy on sector ETFs? You can do this on sector ETFs, but there are quite a few of the sector ETFs that are not very liquid. There's also no daily expirations on sector ETFs, but you can do them. You know, XLK is pretty liquid. XLY is pretty liquid. But if you look at utilities, you look at um, healthcare, you look at financials, spreads are kind of wide in some of those names. So be careful when you're doing that. Can you roll a put instead of taking the assignment? You can, you absolutely can, but you have the same loss as you would as if you did take assignment. So, you know, it's one, it's six and one half dozen in the other. I don't necessarily believe it's better to avoid Friday expirations. Um, Uh, so, you know, there's a couple of comments that you need like $10,000 to get started. You actually need about $20,000 to get started. So yes, if you only have, let's say $5,000 in your account, this is not a strategy for you. You could do, um, you know, you could find lower price ETFs, right? That track the S&P 500. They're not going to be as liquid as an SPY. They certainly don't have daily expirations, but you absolutely can find lower price ETFs to trade this, right? So, um, yeah, even XLK, you know, which has a very high correlation to the overall S&P 500 because of how much of a weight that the uh, technology sector has on the uh, on the S&P 500 and the NASDAQ 100 is a pretty good proxy. That's about a third of the value of SPY. So you can always find something different to trade. Um, how do you find weekly ETFs? Well, the expiration dates, as you can see, there's... There's an expiration every single day going out two weeks um, on SPY. So, you know, go, you just find the expiration that's seven days out from the day that you're looking at it. Uh, there isn't a best day to start. Whatever day that works for you. If you're free on Wednesdays, you work from home on Wednesdays, start on Wednesday to Wednesdays. You, you know, are working home from Fridays, do Fridays. 
that's the beauty of the daily expirations. You're not actually trading one day options. You're just the daily options just give you a lot more flexibility. Um, and you know, these days, I think uh, with a lot of you perhaps working from home a couple of days a week, perhaps that's a day that you you uh, you know dedicate to this type of strategy. Can I use this strategy on metal futures? Um, you can, but you know, metal futures gap all over the place. Don't recommend you doing that. Do metal futures have daily options? I don't think so, which makes it more challenging to do. Uh, I definitely don't think you should do this on metal futures. What is level four options? That's the level of options that you're approved for. So when you apply for options, uh, an account at your broker, they tell you what level of options you're approved for. Level four is, is either the highest or second highest. Um, for most brokerage firms, and that's what you need to sell naked call uh, naked puts. Um, can you recommend some good ETFs? Really, SPY, QQQ, and IWM. Those are the three because they offer daily expirations. You could do it on GLD, but you know, gold gaps a lot. I don't think it's the right strat, right instrument for this. Please show an example of failure of the strategy. If you look at Q3 of 2023, right? Like I said, there was about a 16 week gap where you would have had to basically hold on to this trade. I wouldn't quite call that a failure, right? But that's the longest stretch of pain that you would have had to take where you basically didn't generate any income. You also didn't really have any losses to show. You have unrealized losses. But generally speaking, most investors are not adverse to just holding SPY or QQQ um, as an overall long-term, you know, or even a short-term investment. Um, so that is the quote unquote failure of the strategy is that there was a 16 week stretch where, you know, once you got assigned on a put and it took 16 weeks for the stock markets to recover back to your original price. And during those 16 weeks, you generated a little bit of income from selling cover calls, but not much. That's what I would call failure um, of the strategy. If you use a 20 delta is the win loss 80, 20. The win rate would have been 80% if you use a 20 delta, yes. Um, but your income also would have been much smaller. So your return would have been smaller. Um, you don't pay margin per day because your margin requirement is just what you need in terms of in your account in order to hold on to the trade. So you're not actually paying margin. Instead of using margin, what's your opinion doing this on a leverage ETF? Leverage ETFs don't have daily expirations. Leverage ETFs are terrible in terms of liquidity. I do not recommend you to do this on a leverage ETF. Um, generally, you want to put on this trade at the beginning of the day. There was a question as to what time of day do you want to do this? You know, initiate it the first thing in the morning, right? So if you're doing Wednesday to Wednesday, do it first thing on Wednesday morning. Um, how much cash do you require in your account? You know, I do think 50K is probably a good starting point to, to trade this type of strategy. Um, I have time for a couple of more questions. Assignment costs, you know, talk to your broker as to what costs they have. Some brokers don't charge you any fees for that. Some brokers do. Um, that's really kind of very uh, uh, dependent on your broker. Uh, how much margin would you need to get assigned? Like I said, roughly about 20, 50% of the value of the shares. So, you know, when SBY is at $50, $500, you need about $25,000. Um, you can do it on QQQ, you can do it on IWM, you can do it on sector ETFs. How do we obtain a list of other ETFs? There are not many ETFs that you can do this on, to be perfectly honest. Even like, you know, if you look at BTI, you know, uh, Vanguard's uh, S&P 500 fund, as you can see, you know, th this has billions of dollars in, in notional volume that's traded every single day, but notice they don't list weekly options, right? So um, you really have like SPY, QQQ, that lists uh, weekly options that are very liquid that you want to trade this on. Could you go over the margin requirements? 
Um, I'm not sure what you mean by go over the margin requirements because, you know, the marginal requirement will never go above your original starting point because you're basically getting out at your original starting point, right? So if you get assigned and you own the stock, your marginal requirement is only going to decline as the stock declines. It's never going to get higher than your original starting point because you're always trying to get out of your original starting point. How do you indicate a naked put to your broker? You have to first be approved for naked puts, but I believe that once you're approved, you know that is going to be the default when you sell a, a naked when you sell a put. Um, okay, I think that covers as many questions as I have time for here today. I just want to thank everyone for taking the time out here this afternoon. I hope that this was helpful in giving you a better understanding of a simple strategy to help you get started. Like I said, this is one strategy. You can do variations of it. You can certainly do uh, different versions of it. And especially for those of you that have, you know, learn more about other strategies like selling credit spreads, you can certainly turn this into a credit spread. The, the world is, you have a lot more options once you understand the basics. But think of this as kind of your basics and your foundations of how you want to think about selling weekly options. You know, there are some things that you can't change, like the fact that there's really only a few ETS for you to do this on. You can't do it on anything. You don't want to do it on single stock. It's important to understand, you know, what the trade-offs are as you go shorter dated in terms of options. And this is a strategy that allows you to kind of go shorter dated with as few of those trade-offs as possible, you know, minimizing transaction costs and minimizing the amount of time that's required to manage these trades as you trade more actively or more frequently. With that, thank you so much. Have a great trading day and I'll see you guys here next week.